Hello, dear viewer, and welcome to ABW Preview. With me tonight, finally, he's got his internet to work. It's only Richard, Mr. Cactus Cash. How are you? Hello, Danny. I'm good, mate. How are you? I am fat, I am bald, but I have had a tin of tomato soup, so I am ready to go. Tremendous. I'm well on my fit. new diet, which is a tin of soup and a tin of tuna every day. If I am if I haven't croaked it by Friday, it'd be a miracle. I'm <laughs> saying that I've got some bacon in the fridge and my name on it. No, no my... pigeon pies or anything. To, um... <laughs> no, I mate had pigeon for his birthday. I said this the other day, and uh, I said, "What the fuck are you eating pigeon for? Don't eat pigeon. Leave them. Alone. Shoot them. Put them in the bin. Don't eat them." He was having none of it. It's I, keep, I, keep, I keep seeing the Melchick gif from. Uh, uh from black adder yeah speckle jim speckle jim <laughs> flanders pigeon murderer <laughs> but yeah i'm good sorry about last night the stupid sky ball band we think was, we uh, have figured out what it might have been you can blame your other half can't we your missus yes she was getting thoroughly depressed as uh as a certain team were putting a load of goals past her spurs and a certain ex-arsenal player <laughs> Laying on that sauce. Venga playing the long game yet again. He's done it again. <laughs> Big Veng has done it again. Oh, we just got to hope that Bentner at, uh, where is he now? He's at Copenhagen back in uh, Denmark. So I just hope he's playing the long game and uh, Spurs get Den get Copenhagen in, in the, I don't know, whatever they're in, hopefully. Oh, but it's just hilarious. They're uh, absolute shit. Anyway, so we've wasted two minutes on that. Right then, uh, I can hear my cats meowing at me. Where can we hear and see the game? It's all right, cats. Here we go. And in the UK, BT Sport Live, BT Sport Ultimate, BT Sport 2. In Ireland, basically the same, but you've got Virgin TV Go and Virgin Media 2. Australia, it's always Optus Sport. Canada, it's always DAZN, which I was watching the other day. And I was watching it, I was screaming at them. It's Z, 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 not Z. Fuck that up. In the USA, it's Bleacher Report Live, which I was watching last night as uh, the Mighty Spurs were getting their asses handed to them on a uh, a big plate. Um, TDN, TU, Tudden, Tudden Envio, and Tudden USA. They're fucking making this shit up to make me look like an idiot, aren't they? That's not even a word, T U D N. So. Uh, it probably means something. I'd probably pronounce it differently. Oh, it's not on the radio, apparently. Don't know why. And today's surprise country is. I don't know if the Cook Islands are a country. It said, I've just picked it. Anyway, the Cook Islands, Sky Sports 7, someone's taking the piss there, and B in yeah. Sports. It's more like to be B in Sports 7 because they've got about 15 channels, haven't they? Uh, I guess so. What is our head-to-head? -head? What have you got? So our head-to-head -head versus Stanley Age uh, in all games. We've played four, uh, won four, drawn none, and lost none, thankfully. That's good. Uh, we've scored 15 goals, conceded two with three clean sheets. Uh, so some of our previous games we played against them, there was the uh, uh, three nil in the Champions. Is it say Champions? Oh, it wasn't League? Champions League. It's a cup winners' cup. Yeah, cup winners We've really read through this twice and found four mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Six in total. I was going to say that's a you know. Merson in the Champions League. Yes, yeah, so goals from Merson and two from Ian. Right, right, right. Oh. Uh, and then in the uh, was it the the Eddie McGoldrick game, wasn't it? Stanley Age nil, Arsenal seven with goals from. Uh, Tony Adams, Kevin Campbell, Eddie McGoldrick, Paul Merson, Ian Selly, who was the good one in that midfield, and Alan Smith. Um, and then I've completely blanked this game from my mind. So uh, did I. When we, uh, was it 3-2? Th yeah. We were down 2-0 down after five minutes. Mm. Uh, and it was rescued by goals from Nicholas Bentner, Thomas Van Marlen, and Eduardo, bless him. Yes. Uh, and then in the return, um, we beat the Stanley Age 2 0. Goals from Samir Nasri and Danielson. Yes. What are you doing now? Uh, I've put it down later on. And uh, we've already read through this, yeah. dear viewer. And I had put, what, what mistakes had I made? Oh, I'd put home. I've got home and away back to front. Because when I do these, I just use the same one as I use for Frankfurt and change the information. That's why I regularly must mess, mess them all up. Uh, right. Arsenal's last five home games in Europe, not away, that I'd written. Played five, won them all. 4-12 against one with four clean sheets. That is mighty impressive. Standard Liège's away form in the Europa League. 1-2, drawn one, lost two. 4-6, no, scored six against, conceded eight. Two clean sheets. But three of the six goals they've scored were when they beat Panathinaikos 3-0 away. So in the other five games, they scored three goals. So that's not overly um, worrying. Injuries and suspensions, Richard. 
Uh, right, so just for us, we've only got um, Lacazette as an ankle injury and is due back in October. Um, I know there was there was a bit of confusion about um, Tierney, whether he'd had a setback or not, but I think he's yeah, actually all right. I think I remember seeing it. I'm just going to go and have a look at Physio Room. Physio Room, yeah, they used to say Lacazette as well, and so does Transfer Market. Mm. So there you go. Well, yeah, there was, there was uh, one guy from the Scottish Sun um, who are usually quite reliable with Scottish stuff that said he'd had a setback and wasn't in the Scotland squad. Yeah, because then Bellerin... Then James Nolly had said, no, 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 it was all part of his phase back into to first team action. Because people were wondering why Bellerin and Tierney didn't play um, against Man United. Because um, I'll add a look, um, Bellerin played the higher, I think, most of the game. I played the entire game at the weekend draw with mm. the under-23s when we played 2-2 with Liverpool, and Tierney didn't play at all. And then I thought, oh, maybe that's why he didn't play. So maybe there was a little bit of something there, but they just don't know. Mm. Uh, and then for Stanley Age, I'm going to butcher these. Uh, <laughs> Orlando Saar and N- Noé Dussen are both out. Yes. So, Bless them. them. Right, a few facts about Standard Liège. We got rid of the tactics bit because I hated doing it and no one cares. They beat Victoria Guemes 2-0 in their first group game. Now, we can't really judge them on one group game. We can't just judge them on their um, uh, their league form. So, a little bit of information about last season. Last season, they got knocked out of the Europa League in the group stages. They only lost two of their games, the same numbers as the group winners, Sevilla, and the group runners up, Krasnodar. But uh, who both finished with 12 points and Liège only had 10 points. But Liège won all three of their home games and lost two and drew one of their away games. So they were quite unlucky there. Uh, Liège have played nine league games this season. and They're one point behind the leaders at Club Bruges. Uh, if you haven't seen the film in Bruges, go and watch it. It's brilliant. And uh, you mentioned Sammy Nasri. He's actually plays for Vincent Companies and Lect at the moment. And they are dog shit. They are 13th in the Belgium Pro League. I think that's what it's called. That's an absolute disgrace. And Vincent Company is having such a nightmare. He's put his mate in charge of, uh, I think, the off-field tactics because Company's playing all the games. That is a disaster. And that is, uh, I quite like Vincent Company, but it's good to see there was a moth in here. What do you want? Oh. oh god the moth's a new pigeon yeah i think the moth's uh, spurs fan is diving itself into the light but it hasn't yeah. realized it's nearly d light and it's, it's not going to end its life doing it that way uh their manager is michel prehom uh in his third spell as manager and with them he won the league as a player as he was a goalkeeper and he has won it as manager and i think he has won the league as a manager with another team another team a belgian team as player and another belgian team cup as manager uh belgian cup and uh, i nearly missed this bit out i just thought i'll have a quick look at their transfers the belgian league record according to wikipedia so don't sue me if this is wrong for any um, belgian team is when liege bought center back zeno van hersen from inter milan this summer for 12 million pounds he's only played four games this season one of them i think may have been the belgian league cup so i don't even know if that counts but they had him on loan last season and uh yeah he's, he's a big old lump right Standard player, Liège players to look out for, Richard. Uh, right, so uh, we can't really judge them on one mm. Europa League game. This have season, I so cut and put that twice? You have indeed. But it's oh, good. Jesus. Oh, Lord. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> no, <laughs> so I started doing it and I thought, oh, no, that's player information. I cut and paste that below. I forgot to delete the first lot. Con- control Z, Control C, Control V. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, but going by last season's data, they've, uh, they've still got their top goal scorer. Renard Edmund, uh, who scored 16 goals in 44 games in all competitions, including three in the Europa League. Uh, their second top scorer, Moussa Dejempo, scored 11 goals and got six assists in all competitions last season. Joined Southampton for 13 million this summer. Really, I don't remember him at all. He's doing well at sco- Southampton, two goals in Is three he? games, I think. Oh dear. I'm, I'm sure he'll hit a hat trick against us at some point. <laughs> uh, the third top scorer, Razvan Marin also left to join Ajax. Um, their top assist player, Medi Garcia Gonzalez, is still at the club and got nine assists and seven goals last season in all competitions. Uh, this season's top goal scorers are Maxime Lestien, the left winger, and has five goals in six games. Nine Ronald games. Edmund. Oh, nine games. Sorry, my apologies. Nine, five goals in nine games. Uh, Ronald Edmund, the striker, has got four goals in ten games. Alexander 
Boljevic, the right winger, <laughs> well, has f- yeah, no, I'm making ninety percent up with this. Alexander <laughs> Boljevic, their right winger, has four goals in ten games, and Medi Carcella Gonzalez has four assists in eleven games. Their keeper, Arnard Bodba- Bodart. Dear grief, I'm butchering all these. Their keeper, <laughs> Arnold Bodder, has played 10 games, let in eight goals, and kept three clean sheets. Right. Holy potatoes. Wow. I think I should just use you for Premier League games because that's good. <laughs> that was horrendous. <laughs> oh, I can dear. only apologise any Belgian fans who was uh, listening. Feel free to mess up our names anytime you want. But it's the guy, people moan at me about it. But it's the combination of where a vowel goes after a consonant, after a vowel, after a consonant. When they don't flow together, like I can say German words and Japanese words really easily. I can read them and go, oh, that's, I can say that perfectly. Some Spanish ones I can, but when you get some of the French, some of the uh, the Belgian and, and uh, um, other ones like that, uh, Italian ones aren't too hard for me either, but there's so many. African ones are terrible because when they, uh, and so are South American ones because of the, the, the placement of the vowels. It's just not natural for, I was watching a thing on, on YouTube recently of all the all the words in some alphabets and some that can't be said. And it was really, like there are some words that um, that cannot be said by most people because we, we can't make the sounds from our mouths. So uh, people should go and have a look at that. I was also looking at the history of the alphabets as well trying to see why I make such a nightmare of it. Anyway, I, as if I, I, I made an absolute nightmare of some of those names. Holy smokes. <laughs> see if I got this up the right way. I think I do. Right, we uh, here we go. Our starting 11. So talk me through your starting 11, Richard. Uh, well, I, I think, um, obviously, Martinez is going to start. Yep. Um, uh, I think Bellerin and Tierney are both going to start as well. Um, they've they've done their, their, their rehab. If what was said by James Ollie and others that Tierney, it was all part of his phasing back in. Because I, I was surprised that he wasn't in the United squad. Mm. And I, that's why I thought maybe he had had the injury setback. But by all accounts, it's it's all part of his progress. So I think Tierney and Bellerin uh, are in their fullbacks. Uh, I think Mustafi uh, and Holding, stepping back, uh, like I say, his uh, graduation back into the um, first eleven as well is going to be my defence. So, uh, yeah, Tierney, Holden, Mustafi and Bellerin across the back. Um, I've then got um, Torreira and Willock um, uh, with Ozil in midfield. Uh, I think Nelson's going to start. Um, I, I did I'm an arbitrary between even Nelson or Saka, um, considering he's only just come onto the scene. But I think Nelson might get a start. Uh, I think Aubameyang is going to get rested as well, which is why I went for Martinelli up top. Uh, and I think um, Pepe is going to need minutes. I think he looks so devoid of confidence, and I think I think he he might need to play through um, then uh, his uh, his lack of confidence and, and play through his thought form. So I think that it'd be a good idea to have him in the team starting uh, tomorrow. Yes, and with my starting eleven, I originally had uh, Death Row in midfield, and then I remembered, hold on, we've got no one defending in midfield, so I swapped in for Terraya. And then I think I had Saka playing left wing, and then I thought, nope, he's a first-team player now. Nelson's going to play there because, sadly, Nelson really hasn't shown any kind of uh, form in the games that he's come on and played. Willock has to play because uh, he's going to be the, the Gwendouzi of the midfield. Sadly, Ozil's going to be playing, and he's too good to be playing in the Europa League games. But if he has a... Someone we moaned, we talked about this on the podcast. They talked about it on the podcast last night, not we, because I was producing it. I pressed record and then sat back for an hour and a half. And people saying, yeah, but Ozil's had his chance in the Europa League final. What did he do there? Slightly less than fuck all. I thought, well, that's fair enough, but mm. he's still a world class player on his day. But the more I think about it, you look at how um, um, Loris, the Spurs goalkeeper, is seems after winning the World Cup, he's turned to shit. Per Mertesacker situation, isn't it? After winning the World Cup, Per said, I'll just have no enthusiasm for football anymore. And I think uh, Ozil might have a, a, a small part of that. And uh, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll probably never know. But on the right-hand side, I think Maitland-Niles has shown enough. In, showed, I don't know what I was going to say there. Has shown, um, has given enough at right-back to be able to say, go on, son, off you go. Play in your proper position, right midfield, right wing, and do that. Because I agree that Pepe does need um, a boost in confidence by playing against a... Uh, not top quality side to get maybe a couple of goals and some assists just to show how good he can be. 
Not sure if they if um, I'd do that though, because if he gets injured or if he's worn out, our next game is against Bournemouth on Sunday. That's only three days away, so I wouldn't play him. I'd play Maitland Niles and Martinelli up front because other than Martinelli. Um, we, the only other one we got is Obama Young, and he can't play every single minute of every single game like he's been doing. I think Balogun and John Jules are going to be on the bench. Maybe one of those two might even play up front with him. If if, if Emery doesn't play Ozil, then I could see maybe Martinelli playing in the Ozil hole and one of those two, Balogun or John Jules, playing up front. But I don't know. It's going to be interesting, isn't it? Yeah, like because he, he the team against in the last European game game was was really strong. Hmm. Um, like you said, you had Xhaka in there, you had David Luiz in there, you had Aubameyang in there, um, but I, I'm, that's why I was I'm an R in some of the places of the, uh, of the lineups that I picked. But I think you're right; it's a slightly easier game. Uh, Standard Age aren't as strong as away. You know, the Belgian league isn't the best in the world. So, and I think like so. so when's the when's the Bournemouth game? Is what in uh, is it when's Sunday? The game? Sunday, Sunday at two o'clock. Yeah, so it's like you know it's quick turnaround so uh, yeah and like you've got no one else apart from Aubameyang yeah. and if Aubameyang like dries up or you know gets injured god forbid we are screwed and Emery is screwed yeah um so yeah wrap, I would I would I would wrap that boy in uh in cotton wool for t- uh, tomorrow night because that squad both those teams that we've picked should be able to beat Stanley Age without being too arrogant they should be able to 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 um negate Standard Liège at home. But you're looking back at the Standard Liège away in the Europa League. Um, they did it 13-14, 14-15, 15-16. Next season they missed out, and then seven. And they missed out 17-18, and then 18-19 they were back in, and they played the last 13 games. They've won two, and they've drawn two, and they've lost the other nine. Um, like they lost three one at Sevilla, they lost five one at Sevilla, one nil at Ajax. Mould beat them two nil. Feyenoord beat them two one. Eisberg. Uh, Isberg beat them 2-1 Salzburg 2-1 Krasnodar 2-1 and they drew uh, their last um, away game was in uh, December last year and they I don't even know how to say this I think it's a Turkish team A-K-H I-S-A Spore A-K-S-A Spore that might have even come out right (laughs) <laughs> that, that might have been close. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, dear viewer. I might have actually got close to saying a, a team that I've never heard of before. Uh, they drew 1-1 with Celta Vigo, so they are terrible away from home. So this is a really good chance for our young players to get a game to do well. Players who need to, uh, like Pepe, possibly to be in a little bit of form. Martinelli to look even more impressive because that bloke, I think what you um, the what you were saying about Pepe is to have the kind of game that Martinelli had against Forrest and that would do him the world of good, wouldn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah, I was, I was, I was at the Forest game, and he did. I, I loved his enthusiasm and his, like, he, he you know, his closing down, his work rate was really impressive. Mm. Um, that's why, like, I like, I wanted as much as I like uh, Reese Nelson. I know I completely see what you're saying about the. Uh, there's a little bit of doubt creeping into whether he's got it, kind of thing, and death row as well. He doesn't really think, look like he's going to do I, it. I think. I think the, the situation with Death Row is is slightly different because he's 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 been so injured. Yeah. He looked he looked way off the pace mm. um, against um, against in the Forest game before he got smashed in the face, oh. um, and he did it. He did it against uh, Frankfurt as well. But yeah. like you know, he's barely played. Like I don't think he, he didn't have a preseason. He was injured the back end of all last season he hasn't really played a meaningful game since like almost like what december last year or something like that Mm, you got three games for red bull but i think they're all a sub mm, the the last three games of the season or three of the last four and he wasn't i don't think he was fully fit properly Mm. so i i I would i would cut him way more slack than i would uh Reece Nelson but again Reece Nelson hasn't really had the biggest opportunities but no. whenever he's been on the play, the pitch I don't think he's maximized his minutes well I've picked, someone like, I've picked them yeah yeah picked I think him. he needs to I think he needs to, a chance he needs to um because I think I think Bakayo Sako has definitely moved ahead of him well people like him and other people that are moaning about Emery should look at the fact that when a young player shows how good he is and consistently shows how good he is, like Saka has in the first handful of games this season. Here in the first team, he's playing people on form. Chambers, been out of the first team after the first couple of games of the season, come back, hat-trick of assists, played another really good game against Frankfurt back in the first team. That wouldn't have happened for me 
definitely wouldn't. I mean, not, I'm not saying it definitely wouldn't happen, but you wouldn't be guaranteed going uh, from playing reserve for, um, backup team football, I suppose, which would be the League Cup and the Europa League under Wenger. You wouldn't go, well, I'm going to play brilliantly. I mean, you look at um, Lucas Perez, scored a hat-trick in the Champions League, next game dropped. I don't think you do that under Emery. I think Emery is going to give these young players a chance. And as much as I think Emery will be gone at the end of the season, when his two-year contract is up, they won't renew. They won't take up the option of the third year. I think all these young players that are getting all these minutes uh, is just going to help the team so much more next season. That means we might not have to go and spend a hundred million pound on some players because pre-season we were going, oh, we need a left winger, we need a, um, an attacking central midfielder. Well, that's that's Nelson, that's Willock, that's Saka. All those players have come through our academy, and and Emery isn't really picking the players that um, that that you might think he would pick to try and win the games. It seems to be that he's genuinely concerned, um, wants to bring the young players through and, and help them progress rather than relying on the same players over and over, doing an Obama Young, but for every other player. I mean, Obama Young, we've got no choice but to play here most of the time. And you were saying about the... Sp- to- screwed. We were saying we were picking a strong squad against um, Frankfurt. That was the hardest group game. That away game is the hardest. And then all the other five compared to that are going to be easy so maybe that's why he did that and we'll see after the six games if that does turn out to be true uh, mm. what's your prediction for the game score wise uh, uh, do, 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 do I reckon 3-0 hmm uh, yeah um, I'm not I sure didn't... I haven't heard a press conference or anything like that but I, I think you're not going to be far wrong I can't listen to them <laughs> press conferences I, I can't. I can't. I don't understand a word he's saying. Bless him. Evening. Evening. Uh, he speaks better English than I speak Spanish. Oh yeah, I'm, but it's it's the weirdest thing. It's not like his words are wrong. Yeah. It's like he, he puts them in odd orders and he puts emphasis on the wrong words. I can sit there and I, I honest to God, I cannot understand. A word. I'll listen to him for like three, four minutes. And I'm like, I have not taken in a single word that you've said, mate. Uh, but uh, yeah. yeah, I'm sure if if I had to do a Spanish uh, press conference. Uh, no. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd just be saying hello. I know. I'll be saying Hola. hello over and over. That's the only word I know. Por favor. That's about it. Yeah. That's uh, all I got. Yeah. I think I'm going to go for. Uh, if we play that defence, they're not letting in any goals. Martinez, for me, has been massively impressive this season. Mm. And it's lovely to see Leno actually being pushed because after the first handful of games last season, the Czech was not nowhere near going to challenge mm. Leno for a game. And, well deserved uh, call up for Martinez to the Argentinian squad. Yeah, I read that. Yeah, and Leno back mm. in the Germany, again back in the Germany squad. So I think I'm going to go a bit of a slobber knocker here. I'm going to go 4 0 because that is a very attacking formation. As long as he doesn't play Guendouzi, Torreya, and Xhaka. As long as he don't play all three of those, because then the front the front four might as well just not bother turning up or the yeah. front three. So yeah, I'm going to go for I'm going to go for 4 0. I know it's yeah, like, uh, go on. Have you you didn't put Pepe in your team, did you? No. No. No, I'm gonna put um Ashley in there. Let him uh... <laughs> I was doing uh I did a pod the other day with Sophie and she said Ashley. And she said that. Yeah, I did, everyone, did hear I that. I asked her yeah. if she did it on purpose and I can't remember what she said. I think she may have done it on purpose. She had a wry smile on her face. I thought, I yeah. like that. I think someone else said it on another podcast. I don't think they listened to this, but it's so easy to get the two com- com- um, com- mixed up or confused. Yeah. Right, I, just, been... I just go for the for the um, the um Tuesday clubs, the conservative. That's Indeed. just way, way, way easier for me. Yes, and uh, oh, I think that's it. We said go fifteen minutes. We've been going twenty-four minutes as usual, blabbering on. We've been we've been sat here for an hour and a half talking about everything apart from football. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yes, I'm going for nil. You're going three. Do you say three nil? I said three nil. Yep, yep. Three nil. Uh, I wasn't. I was only going to go for about two nil. I thought I'm not going to go and pick up high score, but taking the piss. But I've seen their away form, and uh, they they've two of their best three players have gone. They're a big central defender. If he plays, they may be maybe only like two or three nil, but it's going to be an interesting game. And I hope we go out there and smash him. And if Pepe does play, I'd like to see him do really well mm. because he's uh, he seems to be someone who is lacking in confidence. Right. If people want to find you on the Twitters, how do they find you? Uh, Cactus Cash on Twitter. Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> who's, uh, is there, is there, who's on the live show? Oh, it is Jason hosting me and Josh. I forgot I put that at the bottom of the thing, didn't I? Oh, what else? Didn't have even I done? read it, Danny. Didn't even read it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, after the the Bournemouth game, I'm not. Sure. I think Shredder 
from the, live from the US of A is going to be on the, the Bournemouth show. I can't remember who the other two people are. And then we're on an international break for a couple of weeks. And then when we come back, we um, hopefully trying to get you on for a podcast as long as we can make sure no one in your house is using the internet <laughs> to turn it all off. <laughs> yeah, and no. uh, yes, so uh, we will see you tomorrow after the game. Thank you very much, people. And uh, I'm going to press end broadcast now. And we will see you all later. Goodbye. Sorry, Belgian people. Sorry I put your names. Yeah. <laughs>